हाय फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सुबोध कुमार झा एंड द टॉपिक टुडे इज एडवांस्ड राइटिंग एक्टिविटीज एंड अंडर एडवांस राइटिंग एक्टिविटीज वी सेल डिस्कस टुडे एस ए राइटिंग द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी शुड नो वेन वी स्टार्ट एनी एक्सरसाइज ऑन एस ए राइटिंग इज हाउ दिस वर्ड ओरिजिनेटेड एंड वॉट इट रियली इम्प्लाइज The word essay derives from the French infinitive essaya, and essaya means to try or to attempt. In English, essay first meant a trial or an attempt, and this is still an alternative meaning. That is why there is no definite definition of an essay. but we can say that an essay is generally a piece of writing that gives the author's own argument this definition of course is vague overlapping with those of an article a pamphlet and a short story well essays have traditionally been sub classified as formal and informal formal essays are characterized by serious purpose dignity logical organization and length informal essay is characterized by the personal element and the personal element they include self revelation individual tests and experiences confidential manner such essays also include humor graceful style rambling structure unconventionality or novelty of theme aldous huxley a leading essayist observes that the essay is a literary device for saying almost everything about almost anything and this gives you an idea how difficult it is to define an essay huxley also argues that the extreme variability of essays can be studied most effectively within a three fold frame of reference this three fold reference they include the personal and the autobiographical that is number 1 second is the objective the factual and the concrete particular and the third category is the abstract universal the personal and the autobiographical this includes i mean in such essays the writers write fragments of reflective autobiography so the personal touch is an essential component of such an essay the writers of such an essay they look at the world through the keyhole of anecdote and descriptions the objective the factual and the concrete particular in such essays the writers do not speak directly of themselves they turn their attention outward to some literary or scientific or political theme their art consists of setting forth passing judgment upon and drawing general conclusions from the relevant data the abstract universal category well in such essays the writers do their work in the world of high abstractions so no personal details no experiences they never become personal they seldom mention the particular facts of experience now the point is can we really segregate separate these three categories in fact the most satisfying essays they make the best not of one not of two but of all the three worlds in which it is possible for the essay to exist now the major point as a teacher is how to write an essay 
and how to help our students write a good essay. This requires planning and execution. Without planning, it is very difficult to write a good essay. There are certain stages while planning an essay. These essays, these stages include jotting down ideas, numbering the ideas, grouping the ideas, adding interesting details, then writing the draft and revising the draft. I will just uh, demonstrate you how to do it. Suppose your students are to write an essay on a good friend. Now, it's very difficult to ask the students to begin at once on any topic. So what we can do is to encourage them to jot down whatever comes to their mind. The best way is to ask your students to think of their best friends and write down whatever comes to their minds without thinking which will be the first idea and which will be the second. This way they can write down without any restrictions. When they have jotted down the idea, well ask them to number it which will be the first. So the numbering that will be done according to the idea. Suppose they are thinking of the physical traits. So it will be one, two, three, four, then maybe about habits, okay, hobbies, and then his features. So you see that when we number them, it is not necessary that the first item is the first. You see, it is number seven and the first number is here, handsome. The third stage will be grouping them together. You see that the last four, they are about the physical traits of the character. So they will go together. This fifth one, is about the habit. So it will be here. Okay, one, two, and then his hobbies. This may be here. Then about his other traits. So this may be five. This is what we mean by grouping together the ideas. When they have grouped together, now next stage will be adding interesting details. This is important because this is just the skeleton. And by giving minute details of their friend, they will make the essay interesting. So I'm honest. So now give an example of his honesty. Okay, you can say returned thousand rupees okay, that he got, got on the way. So this will be one incident, intelligent. So an example of intelligence, if we can give that, it will be interesting. Laborious, well, how many hours he studies? Hard working, again an example. We can talk about his routine. Okay. Then a sports lover, which sports? This can be named here. And what are the achievements of the friends that can also be discussed. Non-vegetarian, well, again some incident. 
what did he do when he wanted to have none of his food? Handsome, tall, well-built, curly hair, impact. We can talk about the impact here. Okay? So, this is the draft. Now, the students can use these points, these details for writing a draft. Writing draft is very important. And here, they will write according to the group that they have made. I mean, certain points have been grouped together. That means paragraph. One group means one paragraph because here we are keeping in mind unity of idea. One paragraph has one idea and the related points they go together. And then comes the actual writing. Actual writing, well there is no any hard and fast rule regarding the write-up of an essay. We can begin in any way. We can begin with a quotation. We can begin with an anecdote. We can begin with a definition. We can begin in many ways. But the most important thing is that we have to keep in mind that our essay should be pointed and it should be interesting as well. Now, I will give you certain ideas how to write an essay. For the sake of convenience, we may talk about what is known as the five paragraph essay at the school level. The first paragraph is introduction. The second paragraph, the third paragraph and the fourth paragraph, they are called body one, body two and body three. Then the last paragraph is the conclusion. The first paragraph of any write-up, but here we are concerned with essay, the first paragraph is very, very important. So you need to pay attention to your introductory paragraph because it gives you an opportunity to give the reader the best first impression possible. It gives the reader an idea of what you will talk about. It also shows them how you will talk about it. But one thing you should be clear, one thing you should not do, and this is using passive voice or using first person pronoun I or my. Instead of writing, he was given a 97%. It is better to write he scored a 97%. Because this active voice is a much more powerful and attention grabbing way to write. Again, unless it is a personal narrative, you should avoid personal pronouns like I, my, or me. There is no harm in using we or our, but avoid using I, my, or me. Try to be more general and you will have your reader hooked. After you have written the introductory paragraph, and as I told you, introductory paragraph, you can begin in any way, but the point is it has to be pointed and it has to be interesting. You can use quotations, you can use anecdotes, you can use anything that is befitting. After this, we come to the body paragraphs. The middle paragraphs of the essay are collectively known as the body paragraphs. The main purpose of a body paragraph is to spell out in detail the examples that support your thesis. Use your strongest argument or most significant example in the first body paragraph. Remember that the first sentence of this paragraph, that is body one, 
should be the topic sentence of the paragraph. When we say topic sentence, it means it should have the main idea, it should have the central idea of the paragraph. And it should have, it should be directly related to the examples listed in the mini outline of introductory paragraph. So, body one must establish a clear relation with the introductory paragraph, be it the topical sentence or be it the examples. A one sentence body paragraph is not enough. Avoid this. Use examples. Even the most famous examples need context. So, just giving example is not enough. We have to provide context. For example, if you cite Atal Bihari Vajpayee as an example, you need to be clear whether you are referring to his honesty, oratory, poetic sensibility or a statesmanship. This the reader needs to know and you must explain, you must provide a context. Having done that, you then need to explain exactly why this example proves your thesis that is establishing the relation between the thesis and the example. The importance of this step cannot be understated, although it clearly can be underlined. This is after all the whole reason you are providing the example in the first place. Best ways is seal the deal by directly stating why this example is relevant. Another important thing to keep in mind is tie things together. All the examples, all the sentences, they should be well knit. The first sentence, the topic sentence of your body paragraph needs to have a lot individual pieces to be truly effective. It should open with a transition that signals the change from one idea to the next. It should ideally also have a common thread which ties all of the body paragraphs together. For example, if you used first in the first body paragraph, then you should use secondly in the second. Or if you use on the one hand, then uh, the next paragraph should begin with on the other hand. Do not be too general. Examples should be relevant to the thesis and so should the explanatory details. So, not only the detail, details, examples, everything should be closely knit. If you are trying to explain why Atal Bihari Vajpayee is a great example of a leader with poetic sensibility, for instance, you need to talk about his poetic achievements as well. Then we come to the final paragraph or the conclusion. The final paragraph represents your last chance to make your case and as such should follow an extremely rigid format. These two paragraphs, the introductory paragraph and concluding paragraph, these are very important. And in a way, you can say that conclusion is the second version of your introduction because it does in fact contain many of the same features. You should be very careful that the concluding paragraph should not be too long. Four to five well crafted sentences should be enough. It can make or break an essay, so you should be careful. A good concluding paragraph really begins with a concluding transition such as in conclusion, in the end, etc. And 
an allusion to the hook used in the introductory paragraph should also be made. After that, you should immediately provide a restatement of your thesis statement. You must keep in mind that it is uh, the fourth or fifth time that you are repeating your thesis and this is necessary. This is not mere repetition, it is necessary to hammer home a point. This echoing impact reinforces your argument when you are repeating your thesis statement in a way you are reinforcing your argument. It also ties nicely to the second key element of the conclusion. A brief two or three word is enough. Review of the three main points from the body of the paper is enough. Just choose the three main points and mention them in your concluding paragraph. Having done all of that, the most important thing is that your essay should end with a global statement. The global statement here it means that it should give an impression to the reader that the essay has come to an end. So a good conclusion, a good ending. So this is how we can help our learners write an essay. Let's recap what we have done in this uh, session. We talked about how the word came out. The word essay derives from the French infinitive essayer. That means to try or to attempt. And that's why essay can't easily be defined. We talked about that it is a literary device for saying almost everything about almost anything. Essays have traditionally been subclassified as formal and informal. We then talked about how to help our students write an essay. So we talked about the different stages, jotting down ideas, numbering the ideas, grouping the ideas, adding interesting details, writing the draft, revising the draft, and then also some do's and don'ts regarding essay writing. This is all for this session. We shall meet again in another session. Till then, thank you and goodbye.